the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us praise God as we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. O our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you, a just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Whenever I hear or read today's gospel reading, I always think of an event that occurred many, many years ago, and I think every year I tell this story, but I always like it, and I think it explains about um, what the Lord is talking about. And then yesterday, I was doing something, and another little thing happened, so I'm going to tell you that story. So I'm going to tell you two stories. The first one is way back many years ago when I was in college seminary in Philadelphia, we had what were called Apostolate Thursdays. And on Thursday, that meant instead of going to class, you would go to a hospital, a school, whether it be an elementary school or a high school or a prison, and you would spend the day doing work there. And for two years, I went to St. Malachi's, which is an 11th and Master in North Philadelphia, not too far from Temple University. And in the morning, there would be the two of us, and we would teach in the elementary school, and then in the afternoon, we would do parish visitations. So one day, myself and the other seminary, we gave probably what was the best religion class that has ever been taught before. And we gave a stupendous class, and at the end of the class, I asked, did any of the students have a question? And these were second or third graders, I'm not quite sure, one of them, but one of the early grades. And a little boy raised his hand, and I said, well, who is the question for? Is it for me, or is it for the other seminary? And he said, well, it's for the other seminary. And I said, well, ask him your question. And he looked at the other seminary and asked a very simple question. Why are you so fat? <laughs> now... If I said that to any one of you at my age, you would probably sock me in the mouth. But coming from somebody who's six or seven years old, there's total honesty. There's total innocence. There's no guile whatsoever. We have to learn things like prejudice and dislike and jealousy and all those things. When we're very young, they're not there. So that little story always makes me think of this gospel. Now, was it you, Mary Ann? 
Somebody asked me this morning after one of the earlier masses, what did the seminarian say back to the question of the little boy? And I don't remember that at all. I just certainly remember the question. But we get that in today's gospel. Unless you become like little children, you have revealed it to the little ones, then we, you know, are, are closed, more closed to the word of God. We have to have that trust, that openness, that innocence when we hear God's voice calling us to follow him so that we can say yes and follow him to the best of our ability. Then yesterday afternoon, I was sitting in my recliner in the rectory, and I'm one of those people who doesn't like silence. I like noise. So I always have the radio or the television on, and I had the television on. I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to it, but I had a program on about the history of World War I up to World War II, which I am a little bit of a history buff, so I enjoy history. And I was sitting there doing something else, not paying a whole lot of attention to the television, when one of my cats jumped onto my lap. And, whichever one it was, I don't remember, I have four, they changed the channel. So I got that switch of the light, different voices, and so I looked to see what was on the television. Well, I saw the last uh, maybe 10, 12 minutes of a program I had never seen before. I've seen it advertised, but I've never watched it. Has anybody ever seen Undercover Boss? Okay, well, that was the program. And what happens is the, the boss dresses up, looking like somebody else, and goes and does work with his employees for the day. And this particular episode, um, I got to see the last person who we were spending time with, and it so happened that this undercover boss was the mayor of Pittsburgh. So it was very interesting, but he was going, and he looked a mess. He had this long, stringy hair, this wild beard, goofy glasses, baggy clothes. I thought he looked like somebody who was on the street and should be begging for money. So I thought he was kind of, you know, well, well hidden up. But he was with a, a woman, and she was a social worker, and they were going to go visit some of her clients. And it was very interesting for just a little bit of interaction that you saw, you could tell that she was very interested in the clients, really cared about them, and wanted them to be able to move forward in their life. And the clients, you could tell again, really had a trust and confidence in her. And of course, this came across. And it seems that what happens in this show is this boss, they go, they see how the person, what they're doing, and they ask them questions like, well, what would make your job better? How could your job be easier? And they get responses like that. And then they also ask them questions about their own life. For instance, are you married? Do you have any children? Things like that. And, you know, he'll learn things like, for instance, this woman was a single mother. And she was telling him that she had started law school, but she saw something more important, which was she wanted her son to have the best education possible. So she was putting him through private school. And she was hoping that once he graduated from high school, she would be able to go back to law school. So there was a lot about this woman, but I said she was very empathetic and she was obviously one of those people who, you know, you'd just kind of meet her very, and I never met her, but just from the television, I thought, I really like this lady. She's just a really caring individual. So anyhow, at the end of the program, he meets with all the people and he does good things for them. Like this woman, he promoted her to supervisor. He said, now, I can't use city money, but I've talked to some of my friends, and we've put together a scholarship program for your son. So you're not going to have to worry about paying his tuition for elementary school and high school. It's going to be taken care of for you. And since that's taken care of, you're going to be able to go back to school for your law degree. So I'm going to give you, and I don't remember what the figure was, let's say $20,000 to put towards your law school. So I was sitting there thinking, every day we have the opportunity to do good things for other people. And after all, as Christians, that's supposed to be what we're doing. When I was reading a commentary about these scripture readings, one of the authors wrote this, that one of the problems with people today is we spend too much time looking in the mirror. Hmm. 
Interesting quote. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, all of us look in the mirror every day, and we shave, we brush our teeth, we comb our hair, we put on our makeup, whatever it is. And when we're doing that, we are not thinking about anybody else but ourselves. And he was saying that today we spend too much time thinking about ourselves. And I thought that's really very true. And Jesus tells us something totally different. He says not to be so wrapped up in yourself. Don't spend time looking at the mirror. Think about other people. Be reactive and interested and involved and part of your sisters and brothers. And if we think about it every day, we have the opportunity to bring a smile to somebody's face. or We have the opportunity to bring a frown to somebody's face. We have the opportunity to lift somebody up just a little bit, or we have the opportunity to kick their knees out so that they're not standing up anymore. And it's not in big ways or small ways. One of the, uh, I think, very, very overlooked gifts is the gift of being a good listener. All of us, I bet, will admit that we are all good talkers, right? And you're probably thinking to yourself, and why don't you stop talking now? But I'm not going to. I'm going to finish. But being a good listener is more difficult. That's a real strength to have. And think about it when you've been down, when you've had an anxiety or a worry, and somebody has listened to you for just five minutes. You feel a little less burdened. You feel the load has been lightened. Not that somebody else can solve your problem, wave the, wave the magic wand and make everything perfect, but because they've shared your pain, they've shared your anxiety, they've shared your concern, and you are just a little bit lighter because they have taken those few minutes to do that. That's a wonderful gift that we can give to other people. And at the end of the commentary, there was a question. What can I do today to lighten someone else's burden? What can I do today to lift somebody up? What can I do today to bring joy into the heart of a sister or a brother? And as Christians, that's what we are all called to do because we are called to give away what we have first received. And what we have first received is the love and the joy and the happiness and the peace that Jesus Christ brings to us. And we are to share that in word and in deed with the people that you and I meet as we go through our pilgrim journey here on earth. So the Lord is very clear in the scriptures. We are to follow him in faith and we are to love him, but we are also to love our sisters and brothers. So all of us have homework every day of our lives not given by me but by given but given to us by jesus christ how can i be christ to someone else let us stand and profess our faith in christ and in his church i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, we be crucified as conscious Bible. He suffered the death and was buried. He was again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United as one family of faith, we present our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders and people of this great country provide adequate care for those injured in its service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those responsible for public safety, especially firefighters, police, and military personnel, come home safely to their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are weary from the burdens of daily life find support and solace in the love of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Diocese of Wilmington to have an increase in priestly and religious vocations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Ann and Dennis McMahon, Linda Murrow, Michael Sola, Jim O'Brien, Mary Schaubel, Cassandra Lance, and Sharon Coco, to know God's love for them and the way we care for their needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Patricia Tish Picard, Father Francis Moon, and Jerry, Ca Jerry Carruthers, and especially for Fairy Annalyn, for whom this Mass is intended, that they experience God's light and love forever in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, united as one family of faith, we turn to you and present our needs to you, which we ask you to hear no answer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that all is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anne, St. Juan Diego, St. John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the autumn who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.